Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on this week's theme of retro video game soundtracks, checking out a track from David Wise's Donkey Kong Country 2 soundtrack, looking specifically at the track Mining Melancholy. Now what we're going to listen to here, as you can see from the words on the thumbnail, this is a restoration, although as I was reading the process of it, it's more of a recreation, taking the exact sound font that was used for the song, taking the MIDI that was written for the song, and smashing them together in a way that gives us the highest quality version, rather than whatever would have been compressed to put on the cartridge. So, this should sound fairly identical to those who know what the song's supposed to sound like. Maybe they played the game a ton when they were kids, and the song's just you know, burned into their, their memory, but it should sound, as it states, less compressed. It should have a clearer, more higher fidelity quality to it. So let's dive into it, dig into David Wise's Mining Melancholy. Very industrial. Lots of panning. Making some of the, the couple of beats feel more like a hocket than a distinct line. This little melodic lick certainly has a melancholic feel to it. Cut out the foundation. Little tweaks to the, the timbre of that melodic line. Something that sounds akin to ooze vocals. Is that our loop there? Maybe. It's a very chill song, I'll give it that for sure. Yeah, so we have about four ideas here on repeat. Minor modulations across the run of each section. Oh, even there, sort of. Oh, plus the intro, so a fifth section. Okay, so. There's actually. S okay.
there's actually two main motifs going on here two primary little uh melodic licks we have that ba 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 da ba da ba da boom we hear that in different ways. There's actually two instruments that give us that lick, but also one time we have it with a response from the other side. So usually it's in left panning and then uh, we get one right channel that's a response to it and it goes back and forth on it. But there was one time when it just played over and over. It didn't have the response. It didn't even have a gap after it. It was just that lick over and over and over. But like I said, there was more than one instrument that also was given that, uh, that line as well. We also have the other uh, ostinato that is the main melancholic one. The one that takes up, I think it's like eight bars. It's a pretty linear melody. I don't think there's any loops in it. The first time, I don't remember what... It, we'll get to instrumentation later. I don't remember what sound did it the first time, but the second time through, it's done on the human-like sounding voice. Almost sounds like a single person choir. <laughs> um... What's cool is that these aren't back to back. We will usually hear one of that, the, the lick, the really quick one, and then the melancholic sound, and then the lick, and then back to the melancholic sound. And we sort of alternate between these, occasionally having that very industrial uh, intro to break up the repetition of this A and B thing. But even within that, there is variation. It's more of like A, B, variation on A, variation on B, variation number two on a variation number two on on b and then the uh the industrial sound i'm pretty sure it was something like that basically what i want to get across though is that there's two main ideas that we keep bouncing back and forth between but they change up what they're doing every time we revisit them and so it doesn't feel as repetitive as i think it could be given that it is these little 45 second ideas, 30 second ideas, just jumping back and forth between them. I really like that David went ahead and put on this extra layer of variation to it that allows it to not stagnate. That allows us to not only just have something in the background of this level we're playing that doesn't get on our nerves, but on a secondary level also gives us extra depth to it, allows them to recontextualize a specific lick or melody uh, which gives it more depth. It gives it more information. So I really appreciate that. I think it's a smart way to go about doing it. Uh, it's just really efficient writing, which I consistently in the past and consistently will do in the future will praise efficient writing. The more you can do with less work, the more that I'm going to point it out and talk about how it's good. Because, yeah, you can certainly go maximalist and just write brand new stuff all the time. And there's certainly praise for that too. It's all tools in a toolbox. But I feel like efficiency in writing, we just don't really get too much of it anymore. Just maximizing what you can out of everything you make. Um, it's a skill all in its own, and I like hearing it when I do. So I'll always point it out, and I think David's just really leaning into that right here. Now... What I think is interesting is that there's a lot of atmosphere to this. I think it's really easy to get lost in the melodic area of this. It is what the focus is on in the mix, and it is the most prominent part. It's what's in the spotlight. So especially if you're listening to this while playing the game, it's probably what you hear most. It's what you're going to end up whistling. It's what's going to get stuck into your head. It's the melody. There's a lot of stuff going on around it, though. There's a lot of really cool ornamental ideas. First of all, we do have that call and response bit in one of our first sections. I like that. But we also have, again, just a lot of ornamental things that sit around the core melody. Little per percussion, especially. And again, I can't wait till we get to the instrumental bit here because I got a lot to say about that. But we have some really cool instrumental sounds here. And they also create something semi-melodic when they all come together. Um, I don't know if it's simply because we don't have a traditional drum kit at the center of this song. Or maybe this is just how David likes to write. But there's a very melodic element to the percussion. In that each of the different percussive instruments are almost assigned a note. Rather than saying this is the snare, it's going to be uh, you know, an accent on beats one and three or something like that. It says this is the snare, it is the closest thing I have to 
a G note, for instance. I don't know. Um, and so when I want to play a melody and I want to hit a G, this is what the percussion is going to play. And so, you know, when you listen to the entire opening, which is pretty much exclusively percussion with that very industrial sound, it does feel melodic, but there is no traditionally melodic instruments present there. It's all percussion. And so it adds the second element where the percussion does tend to be rhythmic in its delivery. And it does create the groove throughout every single section of this song. But it also can act as melody. Not necessarily always as a counterpoint or necessarily harmony, but certainly as an embellishing melodic idea. Maybe just three or four notes to add a little bit of upward movement. Do 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 do. Or downward movement. Do 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 do. As you come down pitch on your on your drums it is very cool to hear those things alongside the more traditional elements like when you hear something that sounds akin to uh, a clarinet playing uh, you know a little melodic lick in the spaces between the lead melody you also have the drums in those spaces too and I think that's really cool but all of it also comes together for something totally different outside of the music outside of harmony and melody and rhythm there's atmosphere now the clearest part here is the emotion it is a rather melancholic song it does sort of jump back and forth between something that's a bit brighter or more upbeat i would not necessarily say it is happy but it does have a brightness to it and that's juxtaposed with the very melancholic linear melody that we get throughout the other half of the song. I don't know what the point of that is. I do like the contrast. I don't know the level that it's playing on. So I can't talk about uh, you know what it might be doing for the narrative of the level or to characterize the level. But there is a brightness to it. It is called Mining Melancholy. And the picture, at least, look like a mine. There's crystals, there's parts of a rock wall that have been cut out, there's dynamite and pickaxes, uh, boxes and barrels, presumably of more mining supplies. Yeah, it, it looks like the level is supposed to be a mine. And it could get very... Not necessarily sad, but melancholic. Uh, not not having access to sunlight, working down here in cramped spaces, feeling isolated from the world. There's a lot of things that goes into mining that are not necessarily bright or optimistic. Um, and I'm sure it's trying to lean into that. And I'm trying to figure out where the slightly positive bouncy element comes from. It could just be the joy of doing a good job of work, maybe? But even that feels like a bit of a stretch for me. Um, but on the flip side, there is a beauty. I, I don't see the whole level. I'm looking at a literal screenshot of the level. But it is beautiful. They are using purples as highlights against the black walls. The crystals are gorgeous. Um, and of course, the animation is using the... Uh, motion capture technology that they used at the time which was huge i mean this was graphically far superior to, to anything else at the time so it was you know gorgeous from a sheer technological perspective as well um maybe it's just kind of working all of the visual beauty into the music a little bit but again that feels a little bit like a stretch to me if anybody knows what's going on with the backstory of this level <laughs> <laughs> and wants to explain those moments to me. Uh, I'm all ears. But as far as I can tell with my limited knowledge, it is simply a musical device to create contrast in the song, of which I think it does a phenomenal job. Um, and, you know, I've already praised how much I love the fact that there's two main ostinatos at play here, with one of them being a bit more playful with the call and response, and the other one sticking to that isolated melancholy. And even that could... I could read into a little bit and the call and response could be the workers chatting together or singing songs to help pass the day while they mine. And then the other half of the song is the isolated melancholy, the internal, when you're alone or when you feel alone or when no one wants to sing or whatever, no one wants to chat while you're working. And it's just, 
you get that sense of it's just me alone in a cave. Maybe that's supposed to be, 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 the, be, the, be the back and forth here. And of course, all this could relate to the characters, too. Diddy Kong and Dixie Kong, and maybe their feeling as they're going through here. Less about the mind itself, and more about the journey through the minds. Maybe it's not so much that the miners are experiencing melancholy, but these characters on their quest to save... Who is Donkey Kong to them? I was going to say their dad, but I don't think that's accurate. Um... Yeah, that shows how much I know about the Kong family. Um, so all this, though, brings us into the concept of sound, the instruments at play. This is bonkers. Not bonkers the video game, just bonkers in that it's wild. I was also an animated cartoon. I think I used to watch bonkers. I had the bonkers game, though, on the Genesis or Mega Drive for you folks across the pond. Um... But yeah, this is this is wild stuff because I have to remember that this was made on a Super NES, the same console whose music we heard back on Monday with uh, Legend of Zelda, which honestly I thought those sounded pretty good for the time. But this is on another level, and yes, yeah, some of that might be due to the way that this specific rendition was done. I think the one that we listened to on Monday was an exact replica of the audio that would have been played in the game, whereas this is a restoration to create an uncompressed version of what you would hear in the game. But still, these instruments sound really solid for 1990, whenever, 1995, according to YouTube, is when this game came out. I don't know if that's accurate. Um, but, I mean, this sounds pretty good some of these sounds i would almost even relate to stuff that we've heard from industrial and post-rock artists post-punk artists um like swans with some of the stuff they've done with their synthesizer work although i think they also did like real industrial like taking real materials you would find on a construction site and making noise with them um but I'm pretty sure they've done synthesizer work as well. Uh, and there's just a lot of stuff in here that sounds really advanced for the time. And, you know, part of that, I just want to, uh, to once again, give David Wise uh, a bit of praise for crafting this. Because, honestly, I don't think I've heard anything else like it. I mean, the, parts of it reminded me of some of the soundtrack for X-Men Clone Wars on the Genesis. But the sound chip just wasn't there to create stuff that sounded like this. I don't know. This just blows my mind. But it also creates a very... Getting back to, away from technology into art. It creates a very vivid landscape of what it would sound like being in here. Even the intro itself kind of while it does have musical components also just feels like people working in the background of the level it's a bunch of sounds of metals and pipes and tinking and clacking that you would probably hear analogous to probably not exact but close enough to create the image of people working in these mines of actually doing mining of chipping away at these rock walls it paints a really vivid picture of this. And I don't think that this level would have created such a vivid uh, experience without the music if you had played it on mute. Which, uh, I'm going to make uh, a terrible confession here. But last year, I played all three Donkey Kong countries and all three Donkey Kong lands. And I'm pretty sure I played them all on mute. And I think this is the second song from Donkey Kong Country you've checked out on the channel. Um, I think that's accurate. I don't know. Um, and it's great. It's really cool stuff. It's, I mean, you can see right now, it's blowing my mind that this stuff was coming out of a, uh, you know, a sound chip from 20 years ago, 25 years ago. And it's a shame that I didn't experience it with... I was probably playing it at, like, nighttime with my kid and, uh, you know, stuff like that. I have to be quiet, so I turn it off. But, yeah, I think I played all six games without sound. And uh, I think I've done myself a disservice now. 
Uh, if only I enjoyed the games enough to go back and play them again with sound on. There's my hot. I, I don't think I can make a single one of these videos without some gaming hot take in them. Um, there's no lyrics to this, and I think I've spoken enough about atmosphere and emotion and what the song is doing, not just on a technical level or theoretical, but from an artistic perspective. So let's wrap this up. Those are my thoughts. David Wise's Mining Melancholy from Donkey Kong Country 2. What did you think of this track? Was there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? Maybe just have your own thoughts, opinions, or perspectives on it. Put all that stuff down in the comments section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree that takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for this one. We do have a special selection coming up next. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow. Continuing on with this retro music stuff, we're going to be looking at a track from Secret of Mana, which was written by Hiroki Kikuda. Uh, the song in question will be Meridian Dance. All right, until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.